Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Gemini for April 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, and while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter that gets you the astrology that's upcoming a month early as a written report into your inbox. So what's going on in April? We have this theme of the earthworm going back over old ground. This long-term theme that started in December is continuing through April, but it is the last month where we've got the strongest of these retrograde energies. May will start to bring things forward. So hang in there a little longer. We'll talk more about that. Um, this energy of retrogrades, of Venus retrograde still, and Mercury retrograde in this month when we talk about the general transits. But first I want to talk about some things specific for Gemini energy. I want to start out with this energy of transiting North Node. This is not something that I usually talk about, but it is very cool. When we look at the North Node in a natal chart, we're looking at your highest expression in this lifetime. It's my favorite thing to talk about. I don't let anyone get out of a reading with me without me addressing it at length. I also teach my apprentices that they have to do the same because we need to let people know what their highest purpose is, their highest expression, what they're here to do, what will bring them the most joy. And the North Node is telling us that. So when we're looking at the North Node in transit, that's giving us shorter term keys to our bigger, longer term highest expression. So about half of you will be experiencing, this is, you know, most middle, or we'll say some middle degree placements and late degree placements will be experiencing this energy in the third house currently. And the rest of the middle degree, like the earlier middle degree placements, and then the early degree Gemini placements have it in the fourth house. So the way you can figure out if you're an early, middle, or late degree placement is just divide the month that the sun is in Gemini into thirds. And the first 10 days of that time is the first, the early degree placements. And then the second 10 days that the sun is in Gemini, that's the middle degree. And then the last 10 days. So you can figure out what day the sun went into Gemini, the year you were born, and then you can see where you fall into that spectrum. Doesn't It's not the same every year. That's why you can't really give an exact period of time or, any, or exact dates. If you're watching for your rising sign, the first 10 degrees are early degree. The first, um, the, the second 10 degrees, like from 10 to 19 degrees are, mid, are middle degree, and then 20 to 29 degrees are late degree placements. So you can figure out where you are in there, and then we can talk about this north node um, transiting North Node. So for the later middle degree placements and late degree placements, keys to your happiness and highest expression are coming through your communication. So I'm calling this sing your heart out. This is an energy of sharing with other people, whether it's through your personal relationships, whether it's through writing, blogging, you know, singing, actually, whatever it happens to be, how you express yourself and get your truth out to the world is what is going to get you on track. This individual communication, the way that you're doing that, is part of the key to your bigger picture. So the earlier degree placements and the early middle degree placements, you have your key to your happiness and highest expression, one of those keys, coming through your home and family. This is also your emotional space. So connecting with things from your past, connecting with issues from your past that could be interfering with your highest expression. It's one of the houses of psychology. So basically how childhood is affecting your adulthood. Searching for finding and shifting these things are part of the key to your highest expression at this time. So all Gemini placements have strong energy currently in the 11th house. You, depending on your early, middle, and late degree placements, you have some different planetary energies there. But all of you have this representation of the third house lighting up as a focus for you in April. So what does that mean? That means that there's going to be a focus on the greater good, working for the greater good, community-based projects, friends, interacting with friends, friendships, social circles, whether they're in person or online communities groups, teams, humanitarian efforts, internet-based projects or connections. This has to do with technology, innovation, um, anything having to do with 
um, advancing with inventions or anything like that. You know, ideas that come out of the blue for the greater good. So you'll see those things come into focus. You might find yourself reconnecting with friends from the past um, because this energy of retrograde is still very present. So friendships and groups and social circles are the focus, but then there's, there's an eye leaning, you know, it's kind of looking to the past with all of this. So you might find um, inspiration, connection, assistance um, coming through those areas right now. For a longer term focus, I want to look at Saturn. And the reason why I want to talk about Saturn now is because Saturn is going to go into retrograde this month. Whenever an outer planet is in retrograde, it sort of gives us a reprieve from what it is teaching us to do, the lessons it's bringing. Saturn is a taskmaster. It's a disciplinarian. It brings this energy of hard work and discipline and organization to certain areas of your life. It can bring things coming to fruition and manifestation in a great way. It can also bring challenges to those manifestations, but when you stay the course, then ultimately bring the manifestation. So Saturn for you, early, middle, and late degree placements, you have that energy in the seventh house. Now, even though you late degree placements will also have some of the Saturn energy in the sixth house, when it's on a cusp like this, like it is for most of you late degree placements, you're going to experience it in both places. You know, when something is on the line there, you'll experience it in both places. So you will all have, you all have been experiencing Saturn fine tuning your interpersonal relationships. So having to work hard in your relationship space, difficulties with people in your life, having to take on more responsibility, feeling like you're taking on more than your fair share, obligations, um, a heavy workload involving your clients. All of these are manifestations um, of Saturn. And um, higher vibration, easier, more fun manifestations of Saturn moving through the seventh house is that it could be building your clientele in a major way, building your business, bringing in relationships of long-term consequence where you're working in cooperation with others um, on meaningful projects. You know, I, I, when I see Saturn moving into a seventh house, I say often that it can bring in people of consequence. People of consequence is someone that when you look back over your life, this is a, a you know, a long-term um, energy of somebody who is there consistently over a long period of time. So fine-tuning those relationships. When Saturn goes retrograde, you can get a break from that. So if you've had a lot of heaviness or a lot of hard work involving your relationships, hopefully from the beginning of April through August 25th when Saturn is retrograde, it will give you a little bit of a break, a little bit of a lightness, a little bit of an integration, a little bit of a breather from all the heavy task mastering that it's doing. You late degree placements, you still are having some of this energy with Saturn fine tuning your health and your workplace. So having to streamline your efforts to get more organized and work smarter instead of harder is one of the themes there. Also, um, having to work hard to get your health into a place where you want it. You might be having to do a lot of research um, and a lot of diligent work where you can't get away with as much, um, you know, doing things that other people are getting away with. Like maybe someone around you can drink alcohol, but you can't do it. Or they can eat gluten and you can't do it. You know, there are more restrictions energetically on your health and having to work harder to make your health fall, you know, be where you want it is one of the themes. But again, Saturn brings gifts for this work. So you're in a discovery process and the things that you discover, you can take with you for long-term gains to have stability with your health in the future from the things you're learning and the things you're doing now. So these are some of the things that are on my mind specifically for the Gemini placements. Now I want to talk about the sweet spots and the challenging spots that are coming. I'm calling the theme of April, the general astrology transits that will affect everyone. Wrap it up. We still have a major focus on retrograde energy. We've started, we started this theme in December of 2016 and every month until now, we've had a personal planet retrograde and or the shadow period of a personal planet retrograde. So, this idea of taking unfinished business and clearing it up so that when we move forward and we have these signs of moving forward, especially towards the end of April, when Mars gets into Gemini and the energy really starts to stir up, we'll have this feeling of where we're going, you know, this, this long-awaited actual 
movements on an external level in the outer realms. But this month of April is a time to wrap it up. It's a time to resolve unfinished business. When I was planning these horoscopes, I was sitting um, one day in a place that had um, inspirational quotes flashing across the screen. And there was one that said, there's more to life than increasing its speed. And that was by Mahatma Gandhi. And I really, really liked that as something to mention for this month because the energy of retrograde is just the antidote to this over busy, over scheduled world. So the more we can take stock of things closer to home, take stock of internal events, you know, it's not that you can't say yes to opportunities that come in your external realms. Of course, it's fine to do things. Just know that new things that seem to come in in a retrograde time often will change their terms compared to what you agree to, or they might be shorter term than you anticipate. That doesn't have to be a problem. That doesn't mean you can't activate it. It's just an awareness to have. But as far as um, intentionally doing something, you know, it's, it just lends itself to shorter term contracts and it lends itself to wrapping up unfinished business. So we've got this theme that continues through April. Like I said, at the end of the month, you'll start to see things stirring up as far as like actual authentic outer movements coming soon. Um, so I want to talk about some of the aspects that are going to be relevant this month. I'm going to give you a list of some of them, but you can get a more complete list when you go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. I do a write-up for the upcoming month and I send that out a month early as well to give you more details of days that have good energy, days that have challenging energy and how to, you know, what you might expect with those things. But here's a more summarized list. We start out the month with a really great burst of energy with Mars in Taurus trining Pluto in Capricorn. Mars rules action and Pluto rules transformation and a trine is the best aspect in astrology. So, you know, you might see something come in that um, that could be notable, or you might use that time to try to get something done that's important. The same days, like April 5th, April 6th, Saturn's going to go retrograde. When an outer planet goes retrograde, there are different effects than when an inner planet goes retrograde, because outer planets spend a very long period of time retrograde, and inner planets you know, the ones closer to us, they don't, they go retrograde um, in a different type of cycle. They're not retrograde as long as these outer planets. But in any case, when Saturn goes retrograde, I see it actually as getting a break from Saturn's chop busting. You know, Saturn is the disciplinarian, is the taskmaster. It wants you to do something, you know, to be on point, to step it up, to work really hard, to work smarter, to do all of this stuff, have all these lessons in the signs and houses that it's moving through. When it goes in retrograde, it actually eases up a little bit where your to-do list is more manageable, where you can integrate the lessons, where you get a break. So I'm excited about the Saturn in retrograde um, for all of us. And that will be from around April 5th or 6th, depending on your time zone, until August 25th. Then we have on April 7th. Now I'm giving you the dates that these happen, but we can feel the effects of planetary transits before or after the actual day that they happen. So just be aware of that. So on April 7th, we have this yearly sun opposing Jupiter um, clash. And this time the sun is in Aries and Jupiter is in Libra. So this theme that we had quite a bit of last month through major outer planet connections, we have another little burst of this. So Aries is me, Libra is we. So it's like someone's individuality is conflicting with something in relationship or a relationship obligation or an opinion of someone you're in relationship with. So that could bring um, um, a moment, you know, in relationships where there's a clash there. On April 10th, we have the full moon and that's at 21 degrees of Libra. This full moon is going to be conjunct Jupiter and square Pluto. All of the planets, all of the signs, all of the placements have a potential to have positive or negative effects. Sometimes we think about Jupiter as having positive luck bringing effects and that can often be true. 
when Jupiter is sitting next to something else, like an event like a full moon, it amplifies it. Full moons are intense already. So the completion, the fruition, the, you know, something coming to be in the areas of Libra might be more intense or more expanded. So something notable with relationship, um, something, you know, someone coming to an agreement, something coming to a closure and some sort of um, something with an in interpersonal relationship will probably be the theme there. And the square to Pluto usually means that there's some sort of, you know, person with some control or entity with some control that is not making the situation easier. You know, usually some sort of force that just seems like it's working against you. So I always like to leave a little room around the full moons because they're often emotional and you might want to have the space to tend to whatever comes up there, whether it's a great positive thing coming to fruition that you want to be present for, or whether it's a challenge that's going to be emotional and you'll need a little time to recover. I think it's a good idea to leave some space around that full moon, which is on April 10th. On April 16th, there is a nice angle between Venus and Pisces and Mars and Taurus that could bring resolutions and relationships. So it's possible that that full moon accentuates this issue and that maybe this Venus-Mars aspect could bring some sort of accord back into the picture. On April 17th, there's a beautiful angle between the Sun, which is in Aries, and um, Saturn, which is in Sagittarius. So this could bring a boost to long-term goals or something that you've been working on for a while, um, some sort of positive energy there. And then on April 19th or the 20th, depending on where you are, the sun in Aries is conjunct Mercury. Now, the energy, or actually by then it's in Taurus. So it's the sun in Taurus conjunct Mercury. So this is going to bring a dose of realism and or a dose of productivity. You know, whenever planets get together, they have an amplified effect. Sometimes the effects can be a positive experience. Sometimes the effects can be a negative experience. The sun amplifies Mercury's communication or information or news. So, um, so I see it as a realism or productive, you know, something bringing productivity around that time. Then on April 21st and the days around there, especially watch your security security on all levels and other private and personal information because Venus in Pisces is going to square Saturn and Sag and Saturn can bring some hard lessons and want some details attended to and Venus rules money and love and Pisces is stuff kind of going on in the backdrop so just you know be cautious of your personal things in the backdrop um, especially around that time. Then on April 24th we have Mercury in Aries making this beautiful aspect to Saturn and Sag, just like the sun did a few days before. So this can bring in good news or long, um, more boosts to long-term goals. There are some themes that I'm seeing, a theme that I'm seeing this month uh, because of these, a lot of pretty nice Saturn aspects are these boosts to long-term goals. Now, even though we're in the midst of something, you know, this retrograde energy that's kind of like a short-term energy or a going backwards energy, but if you've been working over this time to see to details in the backdrop, you might see these Saturn aspects really start to light, light up showing the work that you've done is actually getting somewhere. On or around the 26th, you'll feel that new moon energy and that's going to be at six degrees of Taurus. New moons are times to make wishes. You can check out my video making um, wishes come true. If you just search for Annie making wishes come true, you can learn more about how you can use these new moon energies. But basically you get 10 wishes at each new moon and the more you align your wishes to the energies of the sign that the moon is in, the more easily the universe can bring those wishes into fruition. I also have a blog up on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com called Making Powerful New Moon in Taurus wishes that you can use specifically for this moon on the 26th. So Taurus energy rules um, money, finances, self-sufficiency, um, connectedness to earth or um, eco-friendly types of things, you know, earth sustainability projects, um, also values. So anything along those lines will get a, a bigger boost when you wish for them around this time. Then around the 28th, and it's very close to this new moon energy, enough so that they, these energies could blend together, 
you could have electrifying experiences or information come in because Mercury is conjunct Uranus. And this is happening in Aries. So you really, anytime you have something involving Uranus, you gotta look out for surprises. When it's in Aries, which it has been and it's going to be for a while, you have to guard your physicality, especially your head. So, you know, something, you moving along and something bumping your head. The odds of that are increased during that time, so just um, watch yourself. Now, the odds are just as likely as information will bonk into your head, you know, as, as opposed to the literal um, hitting into your head. You know, insights, sudden insights and breakthroughs. It's a really great time for brainstorming. Whenever I see aspects like this with Uranus, I really love it for brainstorming on any topic. Then we close out the month, April 30th, with this energy of Saturn and Sagittarius with Chiron and Pisces. Chiron is the wounded healer. It's an asteroid that really shows us how we have deep levels of woundedness and how that shows up in our lives and how we can make our weakest link become a blessing and a major strength in our lives. So at this time, uh, there could be opportunities for great forgiveness to occur of self and others um, and trans transcending the issue of feeling like um, a victim. So these are the things that are most on my mind for the general astrology for the month of April. Definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see more about my professional development courses. You can keep track of the registration for my astrology apprenticeship program, my coach certification and online business course. If you'd love to be a professional coach, help people reach their goals, that is one of the things I'm really good at and I love to teach people how to help other people to do that. You can check that out. And I also teach my creating successful online business course if you would like to bring your business online and be free of your geography. So sign up for my email newsletter to get my monthly report See what's new on my blog at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye.